What's going on, everybody? This is RPL TV, your host, Richie Ray. Relax and, and take, take notes. notes. Day 12. I'm losing track of the days. I ain't gonna lie, man. It's been really hard to get in front of the camera. Uh, lately, as you guys know, man, I've been struggling with uh, my injury on my, my left shoulder. And uh, just been losing sleep. You know, um, I do have my physical therapy coming up. So just want to update y'all. Like, it's just, you know, anybody out there, I want to encourage y'all first and foremost before we hop into the word of God. Yes, sir. Um, I just wanted to, you know, share my heart to anybody out there, man, to not give up on your passions, to not give up on your goals and your dreams. There's going to be times it's going to be difficult. There's going to be times that it's not going to make sense. And um, I just want someone out there to know that you're not alone. That's been my biggest uh, message uh, so far is that you're not alone. I think a lot of people feel alone in this time. And what do you mean, Richie, alone? Just thinking that maybe bad things are only happening to you or thinking, you know, you're the one striving to make your dreams come true. Or maybe you're a father or a single mother out there and you're making every effort to make things happen in your life and things just seem not to go your way. And um, the Lord is with you. The Lord is with us. Um, that's why I do these videos is to, to help push and inspire those that that are watching, listening that, you know, God's got you, man. And um, it might seem like he like he's not there. It might seem like that for many days. It might seem like that for many months and many years. Um, but man, you got to dive into the word of God to really understand his voice sometimes. And sometimes going to feel like you don't hear him. But I just encourage someone if you don't hear him, man. Hop into the word of God. It's not always the easiest on a busy day. I understand some people are not readers like me. I'm not a reader. Uh, but the Lord is there, man. And he's with you. He's with us. So before I jump into this, let's just pray real quick. Father God, I just pray for anybody listening and watching right now that the Holy Spirit guides us and leads us to your path, to your love, your direction, to your holiness. I just I know I see in my in my heart, in my mind, the Lord placing uh, single parents uh, specifically single mothers as well that are struggling. Lord, I pray that their kids are protected. I pray that they see uh, the light every single day that they wake up, that even in dark times, Lord, they, they, they know that your hope's there and they know, Lord, that you're a protector, you're a provider, and that you're going to lift up these children. You're going to lift up these kids, even for my single fathers, you're going to lift up the children and you're going you're gonna to put them in high places, Lord, where they can, they can be exalted and, and go to school and pass school, go to college, have good jobs. Uh, be healthy, Lord. So in, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that blessing of health and wealth over these families. And we thank God. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Awesome. Okay, so let me go ahead and grab my uh, my coffee real quick. Ah, it feels so good to have some coffee. Relax and take notes. All right, so we're going to dive into uh, a lot of y'all know that I did... I forgot which day it was, but I spoke about forgiving 77 times. And oh my gosh, such a hard topic to talk about when, you know, forgiveness is like, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes forgiveness is some one of the hardest things to do in life. Why? Uh, probably sometimes we feel like forgiving people maybe requires a lot of mental strength. It requires you digging up the past. Um, it requires you uh, putting your pride down because, you know, forgiving someone doesn't mean that they're right. Um, because you forgive someone doesn't mean that what they did was, was right or good to you or any of that. Uh, forgiveness is mainly to free you from your stresses, free you from your bitter heart, free you from resentment. And, um, I think that's, that's a powerful thing to conquer in your life. Uh, when you're a Christian, forgiveness is everything. How can God forgive us if we don't forgive our neighbors? So as I woke up today, I was reading Proverbs and I found my, um, I found my little book. I found, uh, my little Bible. Yes, sir. My little Bible and, uh, powerful words in this thing, man. And as I opened it up, I read, uh, Proverbs six, it's called wise advice. And as, as I was going down, um, it says here in Proverbs six sixteen, there are six things that the Lord hates, seven things detestable to him. And as I was reading, I was like, oh my God, what is that? What are you talking about? Uh, first, he goes, snobbish eyes, a lying tongue, hands that spill innocent blood, a heart set on wicked plans, feet that run quickly to evil, a false witness who breathes lies, and the last one, the one who causes conflicts among relatives. And that was a sharp point to my heart like really cut me was 
um, one who causes conflicts among relatives. And the reason why that hurt me is because I felt in my in my my life I've hurt brothers, I've hurt my sisters, I've hurt cousins, I've hurt um, I've hurt people in my life, you know. And um, I don't have sisters, by the way. But what I mean is, you know, my my friends, my 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 girlfriends, you know, like um, girlfriends and friends that are girls, right? Uh, and that sucks, man, to live a life where you're fighting your family. And it it, it spoke to me today because um. It keeps bringing me back to forgiveness, but it also brought me back to how we could live a life where we really neglect our family. And there's a lot of things that maybe we come from families uh, that we feel like aren't haven't been the best and families that haven't been uh, good to us, fathers, mothers. And as a Christian, I think one of the main things we want to do is try to be at peace with everybody that we can. Uh, by the way, that's my worship music in the background. I don't know if you guys hear it. I wanted to play some worship music today. And um, I wanted to speak on, on on that last one, of one who causes conflict among relatives, because I think a lot of times as Christians, we tend to think that because we're Christian or because we know God or because we follow God, that we can get away with these things. But the Lord wants you to know that you need to try to be at peace with everyone as best as you can. And that's a healthy life mentally. That's a healthy life spiritually. And I think God calls us to that because that's a healthy life also emotionally. And a lot of, a lot of us are dealing with mental health and dealing with um, purpose and depression and anxiety and uh, achieving our goals and going after the things that we think make us successful. But we're living a lie and we're living a life where when we see mom, we see dad, it tends to be very easy for us to cause conflict with them. And we think we could get away with it because it's mom. We think we could get away with it because it's dad. Uh, but the Lord, I think today wants to challenge you to make peace and make amends with people in your family. And it's a very humbling word to uh, read, to live, and to achieve. And I think uh, forgiveness is key in this life because what forgiveness does, what forgiveness does if you don't forgive, unforgiveness, is it cripples you, it'll, uh, it'll paralyze you, and it'll cause you to constantly live in the past. And I think uh, a lot of us can't move on. A lot of us can't seem to get to the next place in our life because we're having a hard time forgiving people. People say, oh, well, Richie, you know, uh, what's wrong with neglecting my father who left me? Well, what you don't know is that you carry that burden into different situations and you carry it into different relationships. And those trying to be entrepreneurs, those trying to be in business, you tend you don't you don't realize, but you tend to treat new people who aren't your dad, who aren't your hurtful mother, or whatever the situation is that you're in. You tend to carry that burden into those situations without realizing. And it's very easy for you to see the bad in people. It starts being very easy for you to uh, not open up to people, which again, you don't need to open up to everybody. Not everybody deserves that part of you. But there are good people that you're missing out on and good business and good ventures that aren't opening up in your life because you have not applied forgiveness to your situations in the past. And it's like a bug, a disease, a cyst, uh, a mindset, whatever you want to call it. And it, it, it carries you a long way. And, the, and God says that he... Uh, six things that the Lord hates. Seven things that are detestable to him. And to me, that 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 like hurts me because I've, I've been in situations where I could have been better. And I want to challenge us as a whole to be in these situations and be better. And I, I strongly believe that the devil or the evil wicked ways of man is doing everything possible to make sure that there's no family in the home to make sure that there's no actual substance of love and kindness and gentleness and forgiveness in our families and i think once you 
destroy the family, you destroy the persons and the people in that family. Once the dad's gone, we understand that that could be difficult for a lot of us living in this in this lifetime. Once the baby daddy's gone, once the baby mama leaves and you're stuck being a single parent, causing conflict, re, re, causing conflict within yourself and causing conflict within the family um, only makes the situation worse. And I wanted to encourage someone out there that you can do this, man, that you can sit with yourself and you can figure out what it is that's been bothering you, what it is that this family member has done to you, and you can achieve and accomplish the the mission and the goal that God wants you to live and has to be at peace with everyone as possible, live with the fruits of the spirit, love, gentleness, kindness, and patience, and overcome these challenges in your life so that you don't bring this into other situations and so that your future family doesn't have to live in this mindset anymore. Because I do believe as a parent, <clears throat> excuse me, especially to my single mothers, especially that I know there's a lot of you guys out there you can build a bitterness and you could build this kind of strength and hate and this strength and resentment that can torture and conquer your children. And I think the Lord is looking for the opposite. The Lord is looking for that peace. The Lord is looking for you to be the bigger person, to be stronger and to say, no, I'm not allowing my bitterness. I'm not allowing my lifestyle and mistakes that I've made or mistakes of other people to dictate the character of my children. And so I wanted to share that word with you guys to encourage you guys that though it's hard to read the Bible, sometimes the Lord hates these things and you don't want to be on the bad side of God. Not only that, you don't want to be on the bad side of life. You don't want to be on the bad side of yourself and you don't want to be on the bad side of your relatives. And I believe that the Lord wants to bring, bring families closer together because it's in the blood of Jesus and it's in the heritage and the blood of our family that God has, he's, he's made a divine calling and purpose for that mother in your life, for that father in your life, for that brother and that sister in your life to come close to them, to be with them, to nurture them, to look out for them. And sometimes it feels like the hardest challenge in life because it's really the most beautiful outcome. Once you figure it, once you figure out what it is God is calling you to do, and who call who God is calling you to be, but in this generation the families need to be strong, man. I want to encourage someone today, man. Your family needs to be strong. We need to move in power. The Bible says that God did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power. God gave us a spirit of love and a sound mind. And I want us to understand that the enemy is doing everything they can in America to divorce families to divorce homes, to make single mothers and single parents feel broken, to feel hopeless, to feel down, to feel bitter, to re feel resentful. But God's saying, no, I need my people to step up. I need them to conquer their emotions, conquer their outcomes, conquer themselves and, and look for Jesus for these answers. God is calling you today to look for him. God is calling you today to call, cry out to him. I believe that a cry is a cry to God is not a weak sign of a person. A cry to God is one of the most powerful things that you can do in this lifetime. Because a lot of times we're crying in depression, we're crying through anxiety, we're crying over breakups, we're crying over hurt, we're crying over pain, we're crying over our past, and God's saying, no, I'm calling people to cry out to me. I'm calling people to cry out to the Lord to give themselves open, to give themselves vulnerable to my love, give themselves vulnerable to my spirit. Even when we worship, we lift up our arms and we lift up our hands. And it's a sign of vulnerability to say, God, I'm open. I'm here. Help me get this peace. Because sometimes in this life, there's no way to find this peace, but through Jesus Christ. There's no way to find forgiveness but through Jesus Christ, the power and the strength that we need when we're down, there's no way to find it. So we come to Jesus and say, God, I give up everything. God, I don't know anything else to say or do. I need your love. I need you. And I wanted to, to share that word with you that God hates those things and they're detestable to God. 
to have conflict with family and I want to get I want to pass on my prayer to you and, and, and encourage you that you can overcome that you can see the other side of this these problems with your family that you can see the other side of the bitterness and that even if your family doesn't choose Jesus even if your family is broken and doesn't want to be with God that you yourself could find peace within and say Lord you are truly not the savior but you're my savior and you're saving me and you're saving our family, my future family, well, my kids, especially my single mothers out there that are struggling, working two jobs, three jobs, hustling, uh, trying to find purpose that the Lord wants you at peace with yourself. And regardless of how your family reacts, the Lord wants you at peace with them. And I know in my heart that God is going to call you to do certain things, but your job is not to dictate the results or the outcome. Your job is to be obedient. So if you forgive somebody and they still don't act right and they still are not playing the part that you think they should be playing, that's not your job. Your job is to say, Lord, what is it you want me to do? What is it you need me to say? Because in Jesus' name, I need to overcome my past. In Jesus' name, I need to overcome this situation in my heart of who I am and where I'm going and what my I want my kids to be. And I don't want them to be like my old family or I don't want them to be like my relatives because a lot of us are struggling with with the fact that our relatives don't like us. Our relatives don't want to be around us. Our relatives don't care about us. But you, my friend, need to find peace within yourself and forgive them and move on and live a life that honors Jesus to where your kids can look up to you and say, Mom and Dad, I'm proud of you. I didn't know that that was what you were going through. I didn't know that was the pain that you had to suffer through. But because you forgave and because you moved forward, your children are going to look at you and say, thank you, mom. And thank you, dad. And some of those powerful things you can do is not send your kid to college. Some of the most powerful things you can do is not just hug your kids, but to forgive and love on people who hate you. Remember, guys, Jesus died on the cross. They whipped him. They slashed him hated on him and Jesus still came down and said I'm gonna die for you I'm gonna die for your sins and I'm gonna give my life up so that you don't need to be in hell you don't need to live with the devil you could have eternal life you could be free and your family could see the glory of God resting on your face I believe in Jesus name that when you learn to walk in his paths the glory of God is gonna shine on you and you're going to be seen like the lighthouse on top of a mountain, like the city, like the city on top of a mountain. And though you might not feel it sometimes, your kids are going to thank you. And your kids are going to say, thank you, mom. And thank you, dad, that you chose Jesus and that you overcame these failures and all this hate so that you could see peace, not just in, in me, but in you and our family and the community around you. I love you guys. Relax and take notes.